I am a self-professed Jane Austen fangirl, and I am not ashamed of that. I'm actually very proud of it. So for my project, for my 495 capstone project, I decided that I wanted to talk about Jane Austen. Um, and as I sort of got going, I doubted myself a little bit because Jane Austen, like, could I have picked anything more overdone than Jane Austen? Um, but then I found the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, which is probably the newest adaptation of Pride and Prejudice that's out there right now. It was released on YouTube in 2012, and <coughs> it centers around the life of Elizabeth Bennet and her sisters and her friends. Um, and as I, you know, as I kind of started analyzing the Lizzie Bennet Diaries and looking at them and enjoying them, um, I asked myself, what is it about Pride and Prejudice? Why do we keep making these adaptations? Why do we still care? And as I kind of got into that, I realized that that's a really hard question to answer and that I was never going to come up with a good definitive answer to why we keep making Pride and Prejudice adaptations. And so a better question I decided would be, um, what are we getting from these new adaptations? What, what's, what are they still bringing to the table? And in the case of the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, the most unique and interesting thing that they do is <coughs> they change the narrative style and they employ what I like to call multimedia format, multimedia adaptation format, um, which basically just means that instead of just having one medium, as you would see in a novel or a film, they employ many different types of media to tell the story. So the videos originally came out on YouTube, but they also used Twitter. A lot of the characters had Twitter accounts and Facebook pages that you could use to follow the story more closely and even interact with the characters. Um, Elizabeth would sometimes post Q&A videos on YouTube in between the regular episodes and people, you know, actual viewers would submit questions like, you know, what do you want to do with your major? What are you hoping, you know, when are you hoping to graduate? And um, that really helped drive the story because audience participation is essential to a, a good story. Um, and in that way, doing those Q&A videos and having those Twitter feeds that people could actively follow um, really allowed more room for audience participation in this adaptation, which is, I think, the most important thing that it does and the most unique thing that it does. Um, the audience participation tradition goes back hundreds of years. Um, the best example is probably Shakespeare. He would put on these enormous shows that were more like rock concerts than anything else. People would boo and cheer and laugh and do whatever they felt like. They were actively involved in the show, and the more involved you were, the more interesting it was. The perfect moment for participating with these particular, this particular adaptation has passed because, you know, it was a couple years ago that it originally came out. But there are more coming out, and if you have the chance to participate in one of these multimedia adaptations, I would encourage you to do so. Thank you.